Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. This is your host, Julian Phillips. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lady of Good Counsel, please seek Jesus Christ, Saint Joseph, all angels and saints, and invite them here along with yourself to this reading of Scripture. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. But the shepherd of the sheep enters by the gate. The keeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls each of his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, rather they will run away from him because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this comparison but they did not understand what he was trying to say to them. So Jesus said, Truly I say to you, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All who came were thieves and robbers, and the sheep did not hear them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will go in and out freely and find food. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life life in all its fullness the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ so a theme that we've spoken about before i'll try to put it differently in this 21st century one of the beliefs that is that exists is this belief that religion is truly passe It really has no place in this time. Maybe it had a value once upon a time, but not now. In place of that, we have something we've mentioned before, materialism. We have what we can see, hear, and touch, and therefore life and quality of life, fullness of life, is based on possessions and sharing possessions. And then, according to this belief, when you die, that's it, full stop. Show's over. Now, this is a, is it something to negotiate this with centuries of human experience where people of all different cultures, all different eras, all different times have spoken of an afterlife. They've spoken of spirits. So what are we to make of all of this? Well, you see, in a sense, that whole discussion is irrelevant. A one-size-fits-all to the human race, in a sense, has been given, and that's Jesus. But to this day, there are people who don't accept him, and, you know, they have their own religious beliefs, or so in some cases, none at all. So it comes down to you. And I really have to say I'm given tremendous comfort with this analogy that Jesus uses, that um, the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And then he also calls each one of us by name. What is the purpose of life itself? Now, again, I'll say this, that's a question that's in a sense a bit irrelevant. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? So up and down the ages, people have spent years what is my purpose why am i here why am i alive am i to do something by faith we accept that the one who has the answer to that question is jesus christ now i am no seer i am no prophet but i know this much i have come that they may have life life in all its fullness Life in all its fullness, I have come that they may have life, life in the full, is defined by happiness. That is, it's defined by happiness. So studies have shown 
that once a certain level of material wealth is acquired, happiness does not grow. So imagine a destitute. He is on the street, doesn't know where he's going to get his next meal. And through varying circumstances, he gets his own place, he has a source of income, he has an occupation, and no longer is there this question mark about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He can secure that. He has a safe place to stay. Certainly, his growing in material wealth from the pavement to a home, that without question made him happy. There's no dispute about that. And let's say we take this same individual and we take him to a place where he is financially well off to the point where he does not have to worry about paying bills or buying what he wants to buy. Again, we must admit that person's increase in material wealth did result in his happiness. Let's take it further now. Let's say we, we take him to the point where he doesn't have to work anymore. He could be given that much prosperity. He doesn't have to work anymore. He can live wherever he wants. He can buy whatever he wants. Okay, I'll admit that increase in material wealth did increase his happiness. But then beyond that, what is there? If you are already, if you have already gotten to the place where you don't need to work, you can buy whatever you want, go where you want, live where you want, have multiple homes, multiple cars. What is there beyond that? And one of the things we've seen in the last hundred years is um, we as a human species have built a society where there are people with this level of prosperity. They can buy whatever they want. Um, they can go where they want, live where they want. And then what we see strange enough with these people is what's the point? What's the point of life? They've come to the point where this, this um, what you might call, formula of increasing material wealth has reached its limit. It has reached its limit. It can't produce more happiness. And then we see among such people all kinds of crises. You know, we watch them and say, you know, if I were you, I would be so happy. And we compare them to the destitute on the street. But this speaks perfectly to the fact that there's a limit to which the material can satisfy. Again, I, I charted from destitute to working, to working comfortably, to not needing to work anymore. God bless the material wealth, and when it comes to us, it, it gives us greater freedom, but there's a limit to how much freedom we can get. So this is where we come to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, of course, is the Lord of material things. So those of you who are watching your current economic circumstances, if you want a new house, ask him for it. If you want a new car, ask him for it. If you want a better salary, ask him for it. But understand, I'll say it again, there comes a point where just as any you know, video game, you, you conquer the game, you will conquer that game and still be alive, and then what? And this is where Jesus, come in. Jesus comes in. He's Lord of the physical, and he's Lord of the non-physical. He is Lord of the material, and he is Lord of the immaterial. And this is where I come again. All of this pursuit of material wealth is because it makes life easier and therefore more happy. Once we've exhausted that and we no longer have any material worries or needs, then how do we become happy? Our happiness therefore has to be connected to the immaterial. And this is where humility is required. So Jesus says, Later on, he will say he is the good shepherd. And then he goes on to say he is the gate of the sheepfold. We have to go through him. Now, at any point in time, a person can have both material and immaterial concerns. Jesus can handle that. The thing that we have to acknowledge is, and so, yes, God bless you. If you become so rich, you don't have to work anymore. But you don't need to get to that point to then have some sort of crisis and wonder what's the point in life. You can let Jesus do the shepherding job he wants to do. You can let him be your shepherd. You can let him call you by name. And then you can follow him because you trust his voice. 
So what is all of that to say? I come back again to something I mentioned in our last recording. I want you to imagine you are driving a car. Jesus is in the passenger side. And, you know, for whatever reason, I could say maybe you finally become tired being behind the wheel. You pull over, you get out the car, and let Jesus know, Jesus, please, I am no longer in the driver's seat. I want you to come into the driver's seat. I'm handing over the wheel to you. Please take the wheel. Please take the wheel. You drive. I will be the passenger. I put it to you that if you say that with meaning and really let go of the wheel, you go in the passenger side. Let him come in the driver's side. Then and only then will you know life in the full. Jesus wants to take you there. Let him drive. Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us.